finally, The Rock has come back to WWE, and he's looking to sit at the head of the table. But should he? Well, while many wrestling fans might not think so, I say that there are several reasons why he definitely should, and those reasons are the topic of this episode. Because today... Please support this channel by subscribing, and you could support it even further by signing up over on my Patreon page, just like Mr. J and Freehand and the rest of my amazing, awesome Patreon supporters. Thank all of you so much. Alright, I'm perfectly aware that for your average armchair critic, a lot of what they have to say and what they think about wrestling relies on conventional booking wisdom. But if you ever stop to look at a lot of those anecdotes, you find that most of them aren't even true anymore and some of them never were to begin with. And so yes, I know there are plenty of you who are instantaneously going to reject the idea that The Rock should be the one to dethrone the tribal chief. But if you stop to hear the whole thing out, you might realize that the argument has more weight to it than you initially might think. And of course, this is not to say that this is definitely going to happen, and it's also not saying that there aren't plenty of reasons why The Rock shouldn't dethrone Roman Reigns, or reasons why other people should win instead, because of course there are. This just happens to be a list of seven things in the plus column for the great one, even though there might be more reasons than just seven. And full disclosure, some of these reasons are actually part of greater concepts that deserve videos all unto themselves, which I do intend to tackle in the near future. But for now, we're gonna stay on task and we're talking about The Rock and why he should take down Roman Reigns. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the video. While there are those out there who would make the exact same argument for WrestleMania 39, I say with WrestleMania heading to a nice round number and after three long years, I feel that we're finally at the most apropos time for the Tribal Chief to be dethroned. And let's make sure to mention that The Rock gave an interview where he stated that him and Roman were slated to go against each other at WrestleMania 39, meaning that this is supposed to be a match set for the showcase of the Immortals. And sure, there is the possibility that this match might happen at the Elimination Chamber in Australia, but if you ask me, that would be a mistake. As I say, if you stop to look at the shows that happen in foreign markets, a lot of times they do really well no matter who's on the card, because they're just starved for some WWE attention, which rarely comes around to see them. And while not everybody agrees with this, I say your biggest names, your biggest match must happen at the biggest show of the year, and if Roman is to drop the belt, there's nowhere else he should do it other than Mania. Now, why do I think this? Well, that leads us to the next entry. A lot of modern fans today really don't take into account how much marquee value has within a promotion, as it truly is one of the biggest factors when it comes to bringing in audiences to see a wrestling show live. And to be clear, we're talking about live in-person fans, because ever since the advent of streaming, live audiences have once again become crucial, as WWE already has their money from the peacock. Whether fans at home are watching or not really doesn't make that much of a financial difference. And so, the live game has considerable power, and even to this day, that is largely controlled by what matches are on the card, particularly that of the main event. And there is no bigger match that will put people in seats than Roman Reigns versus The Rock. While there are still plenty of people that Roman hasn't faced off against during this title run, the amount of proven genuine needle movers to go against Roman at the show of shows really is few and far between. And sure, there's still one or two candidates out there. The question remains, do they have the same amount of drawing power or greater than that of the Great One. And that is not a slight against anybody, because there are very few people out there who have the capacity to draw better than The Rock. Okay, so now, I'm gonna continue to stress that this whole thing is about making money, and while we just talked about the live gate, there is another source of revenue that we have to bring up, and that is the next entry on this list.
In the age where Hollywood is constantly giving us reboots and sequels, we have to remember that media is a gamble, producing content is a gamble, and so many major companies decide to rely on IP that has a built-in audience. And while The Rock is a person and not a franchise per se, the Attitude Era is, and The Great One is one of the only viable vestiges of this bygone era still around. And so while WWE can't reboot Hulk Hogan or make Stone Cold Steve Austin 2, and if they did try any of these things it probably wouldn't work, they can bring The Rock back in order to make some of that sweet sweet nostalgia money. Not to mention all of the new fans that have joined The Rock's built in audience from his movies. And so, if you make The Rock champion, you're not starting from scratch, you're automatically bringing a lot of fans in with you, which quite frankly just makes your job a whole lot easier as a promoter. And going back to the idea of armchair booking, while there are a lot of people on the internet who are real quick to do that dance, a lot of them don't seem to know the tune. Having a large collective of fans like The Rock has is a real good way to minimize some of the risk that WWE has to put up in order to put on a show. Although, while that's good for fans in general, how about a more specific audience? Well, that leads me to... Now, for those of you out there wondering if The Rock still has it, well, I think it should be said that while WWE did just very recently break all kinds of social media records with CM Punk's return, they also even more recently broke those very same records with The Rock's return, showing that Dwayne Johnson still very much is the people's champion. And also not to mention that over the most recent 20 years, The Rock has also become one of the biggest movie stars in all of Hollywood, with more people knowing him for his movies than as a wrestler. And when we also remember that WWE has been dealing with Logan Paul allegedly because they want to raise their YouTube profile, and we see that on Logan's actual channel, his winning of the WWE United States title only has one and a half million views. And then we look at The Rock's return, which hasn't been posted nearly as long as Logan Paul's video has, and we see that it has over five million. Well, that just proves that The Rock can beat Logan Paul at his own game. Now, if live fans in attendance wasn't great enough, something else to take into consideration is that of merchandise sales. As despite not being an active wrestler in 2021, The Rock still somehow made the top 10 of biggest merch movers in WWE. And while he's still in the top 10 himself, I should point out that for the month of December 2023, Roman Reigns, who usually occupies one of the top spots, slid down to number 9, further showcasing that the Tribal Chief storyline is running out of steam. Additionally, when it comes to the people's champion, despite him having a Brahma Bull belt made up, he never really had the opportunity to showcase his custom championship title belt. And I should point out that those custom belts make money. They cost a lot, but fans are willing to buy them. And so, having The Rock win the big one one more time in order to display a custom championship title belt, which will have replicas selling like wild, is motivation in and of itself that The Rock should be taking home some gold. Because because if that championship belt sold that well without The Rock ever even holding it on camera, then just imagine how good it would do if he, you know, got to actually win it. And also, if you noticed on that 2021 list, you'll see that topping it was... Stone Cold Steve Austin, and after 19 years, they brought him back to main event night one. And so again, I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm just pointing out that WWE might just have something of a pattern here. From a storyline perspective, this is the idea that makes the most sense. Since the beginning, Roman Reigns has claimed to be the head of the table, the top earner that provides for the family. Meanwhile, his multi-millionaire movie star cousin has been right there the whole time. The Rock has pretty much served as the elephant in the room, the part of the Bloodline story that never got addressed. That is, until now. WWE has clearly been holding on to this for a while, and there has to be a reason that WWE has been saving this until now. And so, in wrestling, when you have a top heel who's lying to the audience by saying that he's the top earner, there's nothing that makes more sense than the biggest baby face in the world coming in to tell him why he's wrong, and proving it in the ring. Forget about The Rock's age, forget about his part-time status. Just think of this from a literary standpoint. This is the only serendipitous conclusion that this storyline could possibly have. I know it's been a while, and it's part of that whole time period that we're trying to forget about, but does anyone remember just 
how successful the whole storyline between Mandy Rose and Otis was? That did wonders for WWE, and it sent around people who aren't exactly megastars. But the reason why it did well is because it was a solid story. And that's something that I think a lot of fans tend to overlook, is just how much storytelling, good solid storytelling, really does for WWE. After all, good storytelling is exactly what got Roman Reigns over in the first place after years of no one caring about him. And when you stop to look at it from a literary standpoint, you'll see that The Rock is the only person that makes any sense to take that belt off of Roman Reigns. While a lot of people are hung up that The Rock is never around, and that he's old, we should also remember that Roman himself is a part-timer, and that The Rock doesn't have to hold on to the title for very long. And after three years, a short title reign would be a welcome change of pace. And while this does seem like a perfect opportunity to pass the torch to someone else, I have to ask, when was the last time that that ever actually worked? Now, I am gonna go more in depth than this in a future video. But this strategy hasn't worked in decades, just look at Roman himself. and yet and again, one more time, which is the higher grossing strategy? Giving the belt to an untested up-and-comer or giving it to a proven commodity with several different sources of income that would all benefit by giving him the title? It may not feel intuitive, but it is the logical choice. But furthermore, you should also be aware that The Rock has never won the world title at a WrestleMania main event ever. Which is weird when you think about it, since his Attitude Era counterpart Stone Cold Steve Austin has achieved this feat not once, not twice, but three times. And it's even weirder when you consider that The Rock has main event at WrestleMania more times than Austin. Winning the big one at WrestleMania used to be a major accomplishment. And while it may not mean as much as it used to, it's still a feather in the cap that The Rock, the great one, the people's champion, definitely deserves to say that he has accomplished. And let's be real, if he doesn't do it now, well, there's not gonna be a better time to do it. Well, there you go. Seven reasons why I think The Rock needs to be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and please make sure you're subscribed to this channel and that you give this video a big like. I also want to say thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and thank you again for watching. And as always, Dave knows.